What's up guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I'm Jess and today's video is going to be a bunch of stuff all in one video. Um, but the, the topic what we're going to talk about is going to be be present in the moment. So, but I want to get a few things cleared up um, before we get started. Um, just a few housekeeping things. If you're new here, would you please consider hitting that subscribe button? Turn on those notifications so you don't miss any videos. And also leave any comments that you feel like um, you would like me to see. I don't always get to respond to every comment, but I do always read them. So I appreciate them. Keep those comments coming. Second thing is I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a health professional. I am just somebody who has lost 108 pounds in my channel is my experience on that. So... And the last thing is, I said in a couple videos back I was going to be doing a collaboration with another YouTuber. And a lot of you did guess who I was going to do it with. So the awesome lady YouTuber that I joined in with today to come up with some cool ideas is Daniela Diaries. I absolutely, I absolutely adore her. Um, I can relate to her. And if you're a fan of me, you probably, I guarantee you'll love her channel too. So... Um, her story is a lot like mine. She's real, tells you how it is, and there's no fakeness. And I can appreciate that because the foundation of my channel is that same thing. I'm not, we're not fake. <laughs> we're real people and we're doing the keto thing. And um, she did have some other um, influences like Weight Watchers and stuff on her journey. So interesting stuff over there. So go check it out. So today we decided that we would show you how we're getting through a day <laughs> with the current situation at hand that we can't speak about or we get demonetized. Um, but it's the C word. It's the thing that's going on right now. It's something that makes you go. <coughs> <coughs> um, so I hope you can think right now what we're talking about. But how do we survive and stand keto while this ha is happening right now? So. I like a lot of the stuff that she does. There's a lot of uplifting, motivating, cool stuff on her channel, so go check her out. Um, and now, with that being said, let's get started in my the content for my video today. As you can see, we're much more relaxed today. Um, I will apologize real quick if you hear noise in the background. There's six of us home, and I'm trying to still film videos with the chaos that's going in the rest of the house. So I apologize in advance for the noise. Um, but we got to deal with what we have, right? We got to make it work. <laughs> That's another part of this video. So I jotted down some notes and um, my topic was be present for the moment. And it kind of goes along with the line, along the lines of the previous videos I've been making during this difficult time um, with our coworker, <laughs> we're going to call it, not because um, we can't say the word. Um, so our co-workers giving us some trouble right now and it makes it hard to stay keto. It's hard to find food. It's it's hard to not stressy all of this stuff. This co-worker has really been getting to us. So what can we do? What do we do about that? So I thought this video is going to be something that really can help make light of the situation. Now the first thing I want to say is we've just been given the keys to the kingdom. Yes. As much as it seems so impossible right now to get anything done because we're stuck in our homes, we can't go to work, um, and, so, and then those that do have to go to work are going to like healthcare, super stressful, sad, scary situations, all this stuff. You know, like we're, we're very, although we're very affected by what's happening right now, we've just been given keys to the kingdom. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we have a lot of time being, if you're like me, there's a lot of people that follow me that are your home. Um, the whole family's home, you know, or, or you're working from home, or there's a lot of time in your day that's just been freed up that before you could just go do whatever and, you know, jam it packed outside of the house. Well, now we've just been pretty much put in place. And, and that's if you're doing your part. Uh, please stay home. Please stay home and help others by staying home. So... This is the time that we get some good work done in our journey. And it has nothing to do with the food that we can or can't get. It has nothing to do with um, what's going on in the world. 
It has nothing to do with anything you did in the past. It's something that you can work on today. And that is, you've got to learn to know yourself. Do you know yourself? Honestly. Have you ever, like, for instance, you meet somebody new. They become a friend. But you didn't just go from who are you, stranger type relationship, to best friends, right? That took getting, spending time together. That took um, getting to know each other, learning what they, like, finding what you like about that person. And, you know, you basically got to know them. It doesn't go from we just met today to instant best friends. It, it, I mean, maybe in a few rare cases, but you know what I'm trying to say. It takes time to get to know somebody and then they become your best friend. Have you ever done that with yourself? Do you even know yourself? That's what this whole video is going to be about. Now, I think one of the best ways to learn about yourself is in a moment like this where you have nothing really else to do. Um, with the amount of chaos going on in the background, you know, like this is the time where you set aside every day and you get to know yourself. Use this time that you have that you didn't have before and get to know yourself. And what I mean by that, that means journaling. I like to use just an old fashioned notebook and pen and I'll write stuff down, stuff that I love about myself, stuff that I don't love about myself, stuff that I, goals, um, you know, dreams, like just jot that stuff down and learn about like those thoughts that are coming out in that moment are the thoughts that are real to you that like those thoughts are the ones you should be working on right away. Um, so sit there and journal, meditate, a huge one. I want to actually learn how to meditate. It's on my list, got time, got to probably start doing some meditating. Um, and daydreaming, there's nothing wrong with sitting in a chair, getting a, a bubbly or a sparkling water, a nice tea, and just sitting there and thinking about what do you want out of life, you know, daydream. So you don't know yourself if you don't take time to do that. Um, so now here's the thing, you have to balance the giving and the receiving. Right now, it's so easy to have that balance out of whack because your kids are home. You might probably still have a job that you're expected to put in normal hours with the kids in the background. You may have parents in town. You may have whatever type of situation. So you may be giving so much of yourself that you're getting burned out and you're not taking the time to balance the giving and receiving. So what I mean by that is that having that out of whack is going to create excess stress. And the first thing, if you're like me to go, is going to be the taking time for you. So, and now you're not pouring, you're pouring from an empty cup and the whole house gets affected by that. So you have to take time for yourself um, to make this whole situation work. And why not? Um, so it's okay to be angry, sad, upset, make mistakes, you know, all that kind, that, that stuff. So when I find myself, my new ways to cope with stuff, I am a very emotional person. I can get wound up real quick, <laughs> something I've always done. But the, different in, the difference in me now versus a year ago me, I set time limits now on when I can wallow in my, in my doom and gloom. You know, like, there's a time limit now. I let myself process it. I let myself, I'm human, I have emotions, we're sad for reasons, we're happy for reasons. So I let those emotions run its course, but there's a time limit on that now. I don't spend all day wallowing in my frustrations, you know, because the more and more and more you sit in it, it's like you're marinating in it and you're stewing in it and, and it's starting to build and then now you're becoming critical of everything in your day instead of just moving on, like bless and release. All right, I'm mad, I'm sad. Okay, over, all done. Now we're gonna concentrate on something else, mentality. So um, the more that you are basically um, wallowing in that, the less time you have for the balance of the giving and the receiving.
Because right now you're just giving, 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 and you're not receiving the good stuff. So you're you're like this on the scale, you know. So that's not healthy right now. That's you got to get centered. <laughs> So anyways, um, also realize that it's okay to make mistakes. It's tough right now. Um, the coworker's been giving us a run for our money. So it's very difficult and it's okay to make mistakes. Right now you have to do you. Right now you have to make the most of it and do the best you can. Not everybody has the same access to food, especially keto foods. So it's okay. Um, it, eventually your goal should be to be able to write that ship but right now if it, the best you can is to just be low carb and not keto that's okay nobody's judging you you're like you've got to do what works for you for me personally I I am finding I'm just being very creative and I have some really creative I menu ideas you know like but I'm making the most of it you know um, so but I just want to say it's okay to make mistakes but you can grow from them how do you grow from them or how can you grow from a situation like this? Nobody has had this experience in in my immediate family, for, you know, ages up to, you know, nearly 70 years old. Nobody has lived through a time like this. This is new territory for everybody. Um, so things like this change you. You know, it's when when something bad happens in your life, like say you got fired or you got laid off or you just lost your job. Things when things happen to you, it puts you in a state of discomfort. Yeah, for sure. But when you look back t 5 years from a difficult situation, you kind of have like a oh, so that's what stemmed me to you know, write this next book. That's what gave me the idea to, you know, go to some school, you know, and get a different degree. Like sometimes that's when you discover, but like that change just is a discovery in something great. It's not always something bad. Yes, there are a lot of people that are dying from the coworker, um, but there's so much good that's gonna come out of this. So think about it. This stuff like this changes you. It forces you to be strong. It forces you to be creative it forces you to think on your feet it forces you into a survival mode that will make you succeed i'm very critical of myself but if i didn't bring those negatives to my attention i wouldn't know what to work on i wouldn't even know where to start so it's okay to have some negativity it's okay to be thrown out of your comfort zone um and and that because great things come out of that so when you are aware of something that's going on, you have not necessarily even have noticed. Most of the time, nobody had noticed for this coworker problem, and nobody had noticed if they get fired, you know, like or laid off. I guess is a better word. You know, like this things just happen. It's like crap. Now what? So these are opportunities to grow, and that's that changing that mindset of seeing this. Oh, poor me, or poor me, poor me. The pity party of that, or oh, I I ate. I eat carbs today and I, you know, and boo hoo. It's okay to like, like dwell on that for a little bit, but then you have to like, you know what? That behavior is not going to solve the problem. It's not going to make you move forward and you have to just let that go and move on and use that opportunity that, you know, can turn into something great. And it's, you're holding the pen to that story. Um, so basically that's like kind of what I want to talk about with this video today. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy times, but think of this as an opportunity. And my homework for you is to write down, get a piece of paper, get a journal, find something to scribble on, a chalkboard, anything. Um, and write down stuff you like about yourself, stuff that you don't like about yourself. What are your best qualities? What are your weaknesses? And start just whatever comes to your head, write it down. And don't be upset by it. It's okay because these are things that you've acknowledged that are issues or awesome. And these are things that you're going to learn about yourself. And now when those habits happen, like when you find yourself rocking something, you are like, dang, I did good with that. Or if you find yourself catching yourself hop into a pity party, you will be like, oh, there I go again. I'm being critical. You know, like that's not good. And you can observe the behavior and slowly make changes so that not you can correct that. So this is stuff that you can do now while we have time, while we're stuck in home. 
So make the most of your time and be present in the moment. Stop thinking about when I get out of this quarantine, I'm going to go blah, 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 blah. No, worry about what's happening right now and focus and be present in the moment. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I will leave you with a delicious recipe that we had for dinner last night. And it's um, a goulash, um, a keto goulash. And I will post the recipe link below from where I found it. Um, but here's how I made it. Okay, I have one head of shredded cabbage, two bay leaves, a coconut aminos, kettle and fire bone broth, rayos, Italian spice, minced garlic, diced up onion, um, and a couple diced up zucchini. This is just random stuff I had in the fridge and it's perfect time to do this. So I browned some ground beef. I think that was two pounds. I doubled the recipe. I browned the ground beef and then um, took it out. So all those bits are at the bottom of the pan and threw in the onion um, and a little bit of the bone broth. And I'm just gonna get the onions translucent um, and just like get all the flavors working, um, get all those bits off the bottom of the pan. And this is a Dutch oven, I believe they call it. You can also do this recipe in the Instant Pot, um, but there's nothing like a good smelling casserole in the oven. <laughs> so a Dutch oven it is. Okay, now that the onions have browned nicely, they're translucent in color and full of all those great bits, we're gonna put in all the spices. So that was onion powder. Um, I only had one onion and I was du doubling the recipe, so I used onion powder to fill in. <laughs> um, and then obviously all the rest of your spices. So you got the pepper, you got salt, we have garlic powder, um, on, uh, Italian spices, and mix it all around, get those bits off the bottom of the pan still. It just makes it for a super, super flavorful <laughs> dinner. Um, and then just if you need help getting the bits off the pan, I just re-wet it with some um, the bone broth, which is so tasty. And it adds collagen and loads of flavor. So definitely don't forget about using bone broth in your recipes. Add the beef back in. Like I said, I doubled this recipe. Um, I It's just easier to reheat the next day. <laughs> so cook a double batch. And there's six of us in the house. So, you know, you know how that goes. And don't forget to get every little bit off that pan. <laughs> uh, mix it around. And let those flavors all come together nicely. And then the spaghetti sauce that I used in here is the Rayo's. Any low carb sauce will do. You don't have to copy this exact one. Um, oh, that's also Italian seasoning. I think I already mentioned that, sorry. And you can see that our crazy going on. The kid actually wants to vacuum. I thought I'd take a video of it to prove <laughs> of the rare sighting. <laughs> Hey, they're six years old. Take advantage of why they think cleaning is cool, right? <laughs> um, so that was minced garlic. And a little bit of coconut aminos. Which is basically an equivalent of soy sauce, but I don't do soy. So, um, And my husband's celiac, so we have to do gluten-free. <laughs> so coconut aminos is our go-to. And then lastly, you're going to add your sauce. Um, and this was one of those small jars of Rayo's. Um, but I've used a couple other brands. I think it's Marzetti. I think that's the name of it. Um, but just check the carb content. That's where you're going to get carbs. So just be mindful of the sauce that you use. Look for no sugar. And then I just used the rest of the bone broth and let it all come together nicely. And remember, I'm making a double batch, so. <laughs> and mix that around nicely so everything is all incorporated well. And um, the last step, stick in two bay leaves and then add your zucchini. Mix it all in there. You're not going to eat the bay leaves, so don't worry about that. Um, it's just there for flavor. And obviously my pan is, I think, a seven-quart so <laughs> um, we're going to fill this sucker to the brim, but it's going to cook down a lot. So don't worry about it being super full. Wait till you see until I add all the cabbage. <laughs> so there's the whole head of cabbage and I'm going to put that on top. The cabbage acts like the pasta, in my opinion. 
Um, it's delicious and sweet and it the flavor really just it takes on the flavor of the whole goulash. It's not like a strong cabbage flavor. So don't be afraid of using cabbage. And mix it all up and pop it in the oven. You can see the size of my pan. It's a, I think it's a seven quart Dutch oven. So it's um, a great way to cook stuff in your oven that takes a couple hours and the whole house will smell fantastic. So we are ready to pop this bad boy in the oven. And make sure you get, you might need to use pot holders to lift it up since it's been on the stove first. Um, and here is the finished product. Does that not look fantastic or what? It smells heavenly. I wish I could just put words into how good it smells. So loaded with great low carbohydrate vegetables. You're getting flavor from the beef and the beef broth. And we did serve it with a side salad. I made my homemade ranch dressing. I'll also put the link to that below. Um, but the salad was more for the kids <laughs> um, and my mom, but hey, it's okay. Nothing wrong with eating salad. <laughs> so there is the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you at the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Jess and you're watching Keto Rewind.